Uh, I suppose first thing is to be aware is that there's two maths papers. Uh, there's paper one and there's paper two. Uh, the structure of paper one and paper two are quite similar. Uh, both papers uh, have a section A and a section B. Section A is typically uh, titled Concepts and Skills, section B being titled uh, Contexts and Applications. So with respect to the structure of paper one, as I said, there's section A, uh, dealing with concepts and skills. There's six questions uh, in section A, and you have to answer all questions. Uh, each question carries 25 marks each. Uh, with respect to section B, context and applications, there's three main questions in that particular section. And the marks awarded for those particular sections can vary from year to year. Last year's paper, uh, the first question in section B had 70 marks, the second question had 50 marks and 30 marks. And paper two has a similar structure, section A containing six questions, section B containing three questions, uh, and so on. Probably one thing to, to maybe keep an eye on and what would be, a, I believe, a, a really, really important tip is to, is to try to portion the amount of time that you have for the paper. Uh, initially spend at least 10 minutes reading through the paper. This is an important time for you to, I suppose, identify, familiar, familiarise yourself with the questions and probably more importantly to identify those particular, particular topics that you would be relatively confident with. The strategy that I'm proposing is to take your most confident question and answer that particular question first, followed by your next confident question and so on and so forth. Probably the most important thing for students taking the ordinary Leaving Cert uh, maths paper uh, would be to make sure that you do not leave any section unfilled. Really what I'm saying here is make sure you, you attempt all questions and even if that's the, even if, if it's the case that it's it's a question that you're unfamiliar with, uh, try to read the scenario of the question, and at minimum try to identify the important points or the important pieces of information that's being provided in the scenario. Uh, another really, really important tip uh, would be to make sure that you're familiar with the state examinations uh, formula and tables booklet. Uh, I suppose what's important here is to know where to find each key topic's formula and try to familiarise yourself with the actual formulas for each topic. Once again, trying to understand what are the unknown variables within the formulas. Once again, if you're considering compound interest, uh, as an example, the formula would give you variables uh, that would represent the final value or the future value of an investment. They would have variables that represent the principal. They would have variables that represent the interest rates and so on and so forth. So familiarise yourselves with the formulas in the formula booklets. Uh, some other important tips and I suppose with respect to some common errors that not just appear when it comes to ordinary leaving certain maths but appear right across the gauntlet with respect to uh, numerical calculations and numerical subjects is remember those minus signs. Yeah? Be very very careful with the minus signs. Let's keep in mind like signs make positive signs, unlike signs make negative signs and that's when it comes to multiplication. In other words, when you're multiplying two signs that are the same, positive times a positive number will result in a positive number. A negative times a negative will result in a positive number. A positive times a negative will be a negative number, and so on and so forth. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is, and this is something that I suppose is represented at the start of the exam papers, is to show all calculations in their, to their simplest form, or put all calculations into their simplest form. Uh, also keep in mind the, 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 the correct degree of accuracy that's required in a question. So if a question asks you to present a solution to do two decimal places, present that solution to two decimal places. Also keep in mind that when it comes to a calculation of a question, to use the appropriate un units of measure. For example, if a question is dealing with distance and distance is measured in metres, well provide your answer in metres. If distance is presented in kilometres, well provide your answer in kilometres. If it's the conversion between a, a euros and dollars and you're being asked to calculate how many dollars you would, you would get if you had 
so many euros, well present your answer in dollars, or present your answer in euros, and so on and so forth. Uh, I suppose my, my, my final piece of advice uh, would be to is to the student is is, is to realise that that examinations are naturally stressful, okay, uh, and to try as much as possible to feel relaxed before you get into the exam and be relaxed when you're in the exam.